Well, hello everybody. It's good to see you here. Uh, if this is your first time on a Google Hangout, we're going to take a minute or two and get used to how the screen looks and what it means, uh, what those little boxes up at the top are. There's a chat box and you'll want to type anything in that that you a question or any comment at any time. I'll keep an eye on it, but I try not to get too distracted by it. Um, there's, a, there's a notice up there already. The chat box is probably the biggest one. I have one that says a poll, the polls, and I will be asking, asking you a question a little bit later on. Uh, the, the most important thing you need to know probably is that there is a time lag. When you're using a live stream process, which is what this is with uh, as a Google Hangout, there's often a time lag between the time I speak or I post something up and you see it. So do, don't be concerned about that unless it gets so irritating you can't stand it. Um, it should only be 10 to 15 seconds at most and if it gets really uh, unbearable, then I would suggest you log out and either try logging back in again or wait for the replay, one or the other. Um, the other thing um, I need to know is whether you in fact can see and hear me. Okay, I'm going to assume you can. And the other thing I want to say before we start is that um, you will see me look from time to time to one side because I have a lot to say. <laughs> People who know me say I always have a lot to say and I do want to stay on track. I want this to be a really informative hour for you uh, so that you're able to take away useful information that will lessen your new puppy frustration. So, without anything else to say, I'm going to officially start, um, and I should probably just repeat uh, before I do that, that there may be a small time delay in what you hear and what you see, and if you have any comments or questions, type them in the chat box. You'll see a little series of boxes at the top, just type them in the chat box and I will see them and try not to be distracted by them. And the other thing is if you'll see me looking from side to side or to one side, it's because I'm checking my notes so that I don't get too far off the beaten track because I want this to be useful for you. Um, so here we go. I'm Jude the Puppy Nanny. And did you know that Three and a half million pet companion animals are euthanized in North America annually. Furthermore, 60% of the dogs surrendered to shelters are euthanized. Now, when you thought about getting a dog, that's not what you had in mind for him. And certainly if you just got your puppy in the last couple of weeks and he's, he's curled up by your feet or beside you right now, that's certainly not what you had in mind for him. I know that you, before you ever brought this puppy home, you had plans for this little puppy when he grew up to be a dog. You either have children and you thought, oh great, my, my dog will play with my kids, he'll play frisbee, he'll play fetch, or you were going to involve him in some form of um, dog agility or rallyo. Maybe he's a show dog. Maybe you're a hiking family or some of you are and you like to go on hikes and you thought we'll take our dog. Uh, maybe on the other hand you wanted a dog who was going to be a couch potato. Whatever it was, you certainly had plans for this puppy before he ever got him. And my guess is that what you've got right now is none of what you had dreamed of. Right now it's constant vigilance. There's no time to sit down. You're busy soothing. If there's children in your life, you're busy soothing them. Uh, because every time they play with puppy, it ends badly and children end up in tears because puppies jump up and puppies nip. Um, it doesn't go well on tender children's skin. So basically there's a havoc in your family and the, the visitors that used to come, they don't come very often anymore because they came when you very first got puppy and discovered that puppy did a lot of jumping up and sometimes it knocked them off balance. So 
the dream dog that you had imagined is not what you've got right this minute. So how are you going to get there? How are you going to have this dream dog? Training. That's right. It, it will be by training. And when did you plan to start? Mm, yes, I know. Um, when puppy gets a little older, you're going to take puppy to classes. Uh, your partner has said that he or she will take on the training of puppy. Uh, where you live, the weather is not great right now, so you're going to wait a little while. Or you're just too busy. Well, did you know that the very best time to train a dog is when he's a puppy between four and sixteen weeks. So my guess certainly is you probably got your dog at about eight or nine weeks. So you can see that that doesn't make for a super long window. And if you've had him for a couple of weeks now, time, the clock is ticking and time's a-wasting. Uh, I also know just how difficult it is for you to even think about training when you're busy cleaning up piles of poop and puddles of pee. Um, and I work with an awful lot of families, so believe me, let me t that I can tell you when I say that uh, the number one issue of all new puppy owners is potty training. The number two issue is jumping up and nipping. And uh, before we're done today, you're going to have some tools that will help you deal with both of those issues. But first of all, let me tell you why it matters to me that you do have these tools. Um, a few years back, five I guess now, nearly five, uh, I was looking for something to do in my retirement. And I knew it had to do with dog and somebody sent me off to uh, a Dr. Ian Dunbar webinar, seminar in Seattle. I'd never heard of him. Uh, it turns out he was the earliest puppy trainer because there were no puppy classes for very young puppies and uh, when he moved to Los Angeles and he so he started his own. Now it turns out uh, in the course of that his first morning's lecture he said the number one cause of premature death in dogs in North America is misbehavior. Well I was really startled but I reasoned if if we train puppies early, if we taught them good manners early, then it stood to reason there'd be fewer of them end up in shelters, therefore fewer of them would be euthanized. So right then and there, the puppy nanny was born. From there, it was like, okay, how am I going to teach people what they need to know so that they can train their puppies? So I started by going off to a two-week intensive um, training program called Coaching People to Train Their dogs with Terry Ryan at Legacy Canine, yes, Legacy Canine in Squim, Washington. That was pretty intensive and we did uh, clicker training with chickens. Well, I'm not the most hand-to-eye coordinated person, so the clicker training with the chickens was kind of laughable and Terry would congratulate me for being game enough to have a go, but in any event, I'd heard Ian say, Ian Dunbar say that we always have our voices with us, so, you know, why don't we just use those? Now, there's nothing wrong with clickers. Not a thing, not a thing. If you have the coordination, and certainly if you have an older dog, it's a great way of shaping an older dog's behavior. But for me, um, given my lack of coordination, I decided that legacy, at Legacy that I would be using my voice. But I came away ready to go. Now, in addition to my that formal training there, I have been uh, an attendee... Uh, I've been an attendee at uh, Ian Dunbar seminars um, every year. I'm just going to answer, oh, um, yes, it's on video. Um, uh, I will send you another link. Now that makes life a little bit complicated when I say I'm going to do that because because I'm not sure what's going to happen when I uh, try and open another window. So here goes and if we lose it all I will return. So 
I'm just hoping for the best here. Um, and I have to do several things. So and I, I guess this is why people talk about having, um, having uh, direct link to the webinar room. This is why people talk about having two computers uh, on the go so that they can uh, they can do several things at once and I can assure you right this minute that I am not a techie person um, I've learned a lot as we go along I'm going to just I, once again I'm going to open another window and I'm going to have to try and talk and do two things at once which is never good um, mm. okay uh, don't think it's going to let me. I'm going to have to, let's try this, oops, let's try and see. Oh dear. Um, not working. Okay, I know what I'm going to do and I don't know if it's going to work but um, I'm going to Okay, I'm going to put right here another link. And if you can see that, Joan, uh, I would suggest that you cut and paste that link. Or you can click on it. I don't know what will happen. But if you cut, cut and paste it in a browser, you should be in with us. Uh, in the meantime, I can hope for the best and I will carry on. So um, here I am four years into my self-study immersion program. And in the course of, of my study so that I could train people, I could actually coach people how to train their puppies, I have been an avid reader of Patricia McConnell, Turid Rugas is one of my favorites, Victoria Stilwell, Nicole Wilde, and you know what? They're all... Uh, positive reinforcement trainers and what that means and it's a Ian Dunbar says this kind of training is so old it's new again this is a gen gentle humane respectful way of training it means that we use lures as to to train our dogs what we want them to do and it basically it's hands free so that hands become good things uh, they they're they're never used to jerk or we don't push down rumps to get a dog to sit. So all the trainers that I, whose work I follow are all positive reward-based trainers. And of course you've heard me say already half a dozen times Dr. Ian Dunbar, one of my favorites. And my, at late, my, my most recent uh, favorite trainer is a young man out of New Orleans called Zach George. Um, I'm actually going to, I'm a huge fan of his and I'm going to just give you the information for the two of them um, because you may wish to um, you may wish to make a note uh, so that you can check it out yourself later um, my go-to guru is indeed Dr. Ian Dunbar and he uh, his information and loads of it can be found at dogstardaily.com and the young man I was just referring to is Zach George and his uh, his program is called Zach George's Dog Training Revolution and he talks a huge amount about respect and patience and love and not undermining the intelligence of dogs, letting them think. He has, in ex oh he's got several hundred videos on YouTube so I strongly, if you've got a uh, dog or puppy or you're wanting instant um, video learning you'll find that he's he's really he's he's good he's very good so um, I do recommend him so now how do I get back to here here we are I'm back again every time I do that I go ah! uh, I'm just going to Oops, a daisy can't see anything now. I wonder if Joan has made it to join us. All righty. Well, we'll hope for the best. Um, you know, 
I'm sort of like a puppy. When we're training puppy, I always, when I'm working with people to train their puppies, I always say, you know, training never stops. Never stops. And, and my training never stops either because I like to keep abreast of what's going on. I like to make sure that there's, uh, if there's something new, new or, or a slightly different tack that I'm learning about it. So my training, just like a puppy, it never stops. I'm very, very fortunate in that I live, uh, with my daughter and family and she has an in-home dog daycare and boarding so for the past seven and a half years I've lived with four, five and six dogs which has provided a tremendous opportunity to observe their behavior and I always thought I spoke pretty good dog well now I'm pretty much convinced I speak excellent dog <laughs> the first puppies that I ever trained were my own and uh, although I've had dogs all my life um, I first got my very own puppy uh, about 16 years ago and his name was Jack, he was a bulldog boxer cross and he and I went off to classes uh, because I had never trained a puppy before and it went very well because he was a very good boy and he learned well and uh, but he spent a lot of time alone so a year and a half later I thought he needed company and I got a second bulldog boxer cross named Gus. Well, as Jack was seemed to have been born a gentleman, I believe Gus was born a street kid because he, well, he was a lot of fun. He was a lot of fun, but he certainly wasn't the gentleman that Jack was. But I learned about crate training uh, in the training I'd done with Jack and how crates are the most wonderful places for puppies to spend time. It becomes their safe space. Uh, they learned to love it in there and it seemed a sensible thing to do with a nine week old puppy and me having to go to work and come home at lunchtime. So I started and I put Gus in a crate and he cried a little bit and then he cried a little bit more and then he amped up the volume and then he barked and then he screamed. He literally screamed and screamed and screamed. I let him out. That was my first mistake. So the next day, uh, what I should have realized, nobody told me though, what I should have realized was that in a couple of days or a few more efforts, I could have, I could have had him very, being quite comfortable in the crate, but I didn't. So the next day I decided I'd turn my kitchen into a confinement area with, you know, water and toys and a baby gate and all of that. And I came home at lunchtime that day to find the gate on the floor with one leg a bit chewed and a pile of poop on the dining room carpet. So I quit. I'm sorry I did. And I would tell anybody today, please don't. Uh, stay with it because a long-term confinement area and a crate are two of the best friends when you've got a new puppy. Um, and you know what? I, I understand your frustration. I know how busy you are and I know how much work is involved in working with a new puppy. Jack was without a doubt best dog anybody could ever have. And what I'll say to you is if you do some work with your now not best, <laughs> lovable a puppy, then you too will be saying, yeah, that's my dog. He's the best ever. So um, now, because I want to give you some useful information, and you know why I do, we're going to go on to step one of developing your dream dog. Because I, I know that you'd like to stop soothing those crying children. I know that at the end of the day you'd like to sit down. You'd probably like to have a peaceful meal. Um, so, and you'd, I'm pretty sure you'd like to stop cleaning up puddles. So, let's talk about potty training. And so we make it easy. And here we go. So your puppy has just arrived and this is the way um, I want to start right at the very beginning. So you're going to park the car. You've either picked the puppy up at the breeder or from the airport and you're going to take a deep breath. You're going to make a plan. You're going to think about how you're going to take your puppy to the potty area because you've created a potty area or you've decided, you and your family have decided where it is you want puppy to go potty. And if you follow the same pattern all the time. The pattern will save you time, energy, and potentially money. Money that you don't want to spend on having carpets cleaned. Are you ready? So let's go.
check your pockets, make sure they've got treats, then to open your pup's crate and snap on the leash. If it's a long way to the puppy area, sorry, to the potty area, <laughs> carry your puppy. Uh, if not, if it's close, then put him on the ground because the um, the movement will wiggle anything that needs to come out. Now if he's come a long distance it's quite likely he may have to pee right away so in which case I would carry him and I would move quickly. Um, now once you get to the potty area you need to, you need to stand very still. Uh, he's on the ground with his leash on and you can say to him using his name go pee, be quick, hurry up or any phrase that he will learn to mean goes means to go potty. Watch very carefully because uh, if he's very low to the ground it'll be hard to tell whether he's peed or not. Uh, make sure he's finished and when he has finished praise him profusely and give him three tiny treats. The thing you want to remember is that behavior that is rewarded will be repeated and you want your puppy to get the association that if he pees outside and poops outside he will get rewarded for it. And you're not going to reward him all his life but this is how he gets the idea, oh this is a good thing, this is what I'm supposed to do. And then when he's empty or you've been out there for three minutes which will seem like an eternity, uh, then you can take him inside. You can, if he's empty, if he's done what you wanted him to do, then you can play with him in the kitchen for 10 or 15 minutes. But then he needs to go right into his long-term confinement area. And um, we we can talk about that a little bit uh, using, you can either use a laundry room, a bathroom, a hallway. Um, if you're using an X-Pen, you can see a picture there in the picture, um, which is a, like a metal fence, then you can set it up in a corner somewhere or uh, you can make it into a freestanding fenced area in your kitchen. And so you put him in there and his crate is in there, he has water in there and, a, and he has a stuffed chew toy. And I will talk a little bit about stuffed chew toys when you can see me again so I can show them to you. Um, so he's, you close the crate after he's explored this area and you've been there for a little while, uh, little while meaning very few minutes, you put him in the crate with the stuff to chew toy, close the crate door and set the timer for the top of the hour. You can leave the area or if you can't bear to, you can sit quietly beside the crate, maybe humming a little. That's very, very peaceful for both of you. And when the timer goes at the top of the hour, if he's awake, follow the steps that we talked about. You know, treats in your pocket, leash on to the potty area, stand still, tell him to go pee, when he pees reward him. Like that and then come back in and if he's still asleep set the timer for another 15 minutes but keep an eye on him because you know that when he wakes up he will need to potty almost immediately. And if you take him out and he doesn't do any of that, well don't worry because Puppies don't pee and poop on the hour. They certainly only poop generally three or four times a day at this age. Um, but we set it for us humans because we don't remember. We're busy. We have other things to do and we go, oh, I think I just took him out. Oh, when did I take him out? When did he pee? So if you set the a timer for the top of each hour, then you know you're taking your puppy out every hour and at this stage in his life, eight or nine weeks, the most his bladder will hold would be two hours so you're going to hit it sooner or later. So if he doesn't go potty when you take him out, just bring him back to the confinement area and set the timer for 15 minutes and in a day or two you will have had an opportunity to observe your puppy's P uh, potty pattern. Uh, generally for sure within half an hour of eating uh, pups will need to eliminate so you, could, you got that one and it this potty training is what I call puppy immersion because it's super intense for a short time sort of like a language immersion course and it requires a huge brief time commitment so it's really intense right now but it won't take very very long and the big payoff of using a confinement area crate and uh, chew toys and a timer is that you won't have potty accidents on your floors or your carpet. Your, your clothing and your shoes and your boots won't be destroyed and you won't be rushing off to the vet for emergency care when puppy has 
uh, chewed a, a toxic plant or gotten into something he shouldn't. And there will be less puppy chaos in your house. Um, and if you create a pattern and you're consistent with it, you'll be amazed at how quickly this potty training will go. And there's no point in losing patience. He's doing the best he can. His bladder and his sphinx sphincter, that's a mouthful, uh, are not very well con developed yet. So he doesn't have much control. That's why we have to take control. And be sure in everything that you do, my favorite line with your puppy is to have fun. Oops, where do we go now? That seems to be, that's the end of that one. So I guess we'll come back to me if I can. Yes, there I am. Look at that. I'm always <laughs> amazed. I'm a puppy expert, not a technology expert. So anytime things work, I'm thrilled. Um, so um, just recently, I have created an online puppy training course called the Four, Puppy Nanny's Four Paw Training Pattern. And it's uh, designed for people who are super busy to add a little, um, a little more structure to their life with their new puppy. And each week, how, what, what's involved is that each week for six weeks, there'll be a live webinar. There will be a live separate question and answer session. And each week in your inbox, you will get a, um, an email, a, a, a download with video, slide presentation, audio uh, of all of the things that you need to cover for the week. And um, so you'll get little bite-sized pieces of training that you can handle um, easily. So that's because, you know, even as you work on the potty training, you, you still got to begin the other pieces of training. You know, the sit, the stay, come, uh, a little bit of leash walking, although we won't add a leash, we call that follow. We want to train your puppy to look at you when you ask. You want to train him to lie down. So you don't want to waste puppyhood. Right now, when puppies are eight, nine, ten weeks of age, they are such willing students. They'll do anything you ask, especially if you're going to give them a little reward. Not that I'm suggesting that they, you go on giving them food treats for their life, but it's a great way for the first 20 or so repetitions of training anything, uh, it's a great way to get them doing it because, like I said, uh, they do what's rewarded will be repeated. So um, you do have to, you do have, you, it's really important that you get started right away because once adolescence hits, and that could be depending on the breed, and uh, i.e. the size of the dog, anywhere from 14 weeks onward, and it lasts up to they're about, till they're about two. And when, they, that, when the blush of initial puppyhood is over and you're into adolescence, a lot of things in the world become more interesting than you. So you, you're missing an opportunity if you don't start right away because young puppies are such willing students. They'll do anything you ask. You know why I work with puppies because my mission is to keep puppies in their first homes for life. The other thing is I want you to have the dog that you've dreamed of because when you do then he's likely to stay in his first home for life. You, I know how busy you are. That's why I created this system which has a pattern because it's a well-known fact that anything that has a system or a pattern is a time saver. Uh, it, it saves you time, and um, when it saves you time and you have a new puppy, then you actually have time to sit down for a minute, put your feet up, imagine. Uh, so my four paw training pattern consists of the four, the four paws are show, tell, reward and release, and repeat, repeat, repeat. Yes, new puppies upset your routine. And the only thing with having a pattern, or the big thing with having a pattern, is that if you have a pattern and a system of how you're of training what you want to train, and it comes to you in small bites, then it will lessen the disruption, which in turn which will, of course, lessen your frustration. And all that has to be good. And if I can convince you of only one thing today, the thing that I would love you to take away is, I need to start training my puppy now. 
yes, you can train your puppy at any age. You can train, you can change behaviors in, in dogs of any age. But if you have a new puppy, my question to you is why on earth would you wait when right now you have, um, you have a willing student? So you get potty training and crate training underway and we're going to start training puppy to leave it. Uh, because as I said to you, in working with the families that I do, the number one priority was potty training, number two was uh, puppies jumping up and nipping. So let's talk a little bit about jumping up and nipping. It's normal. Puppies jump up to their moms. If mom is walking around, this is as they get older, you know, six, seven weeks, mom is walking around, they jump up to get at, at mom's teeth. And when they're playing with their other their siblings, they jump and they roll and they nip and they and, and when one of them bites to the other too hard, you'll hear them go Ow! and there'll be a little back away and then the play will resume. So they come to us not knowing that we humans are not all keen on this behavior. And of course they have no idea how much it hurts. So first of all, let's talk about if you have some very small children in your life, your own or um, grandchildren or neighbor kids. If they're small, of course, you've got a new puppy. They want to come and visit it. And that's great because you want your puppy to get used to uh, people of all sizes and ages. But you do, number one, need to supervise children and puppies at all times. No exceptions, not even a nanosecond because that's asking for trouble. And invariably, um, puppies get excited. Kids get excited. And they get a little bit afraid if puppy is jumpy. So then they start to flail their arms around and then their voices get higher and puppy sees this is a great game. So what little kids need to learn to do, and it's not easy, that's why they need you, is to stand very still. Ideally, when I teach the program called Be a Tree, we, we teach them to stand very still with their hands folded low and to look away from the puppy or to, bow, or to bend their necks like this so that they're not making eye contact with the puppy and to count until an adult comes to their rescue. Well, they don't have to count very far because you're going to be right there and you're going to show them how. And if the folding of their hands is too much for them, ask them to press their flat palms against their thighs. What we're trying to do, as you can imagine, is uh, stop the Stop the fingers. Stop the, the movement of hands and arms that just excites puppy. So that's what we do with little, little kids. And if they happen to be playing on the floor with the puppy and puppy starts to nip and pull and pull at their clothing, then we teach them to be a rock. So they stay right there on the floor and they tuck themselves really small and they put their heads down and fold their hands behind their necks like that. And so that you can do that with the children in your life too and show them how that's done. Um, older kids can actually mimic what pups do when they're playing and they can and so can you adults can do this too when you're playing with your puppy or your puppy's getting excited and he nips you uh, you say Ow! and you turn your head away not for very long just for a second or two to let him know that he's not going to get your attention that way uh, and when he stops when he lets go and want to make sure his teeth are not caught, by the way. That can happen, if, depending on the fabric you're wearing. Um, then, then you can resume play, or you can, if he knows how to sit, you call him back to you, ask him to sit, because when you do that, that's puppy's way of saying, oh, sorry, come we play again. Uh, now, the, the next part of teaching your puppy to leave it, um, I, call, I call that... Uh, I call it leaving it, but the word I use in training it is off. And so again, I'm going to um, do this by way of a slide presentation because it's probably a little bit uh, easier to follow. And besides, it's a change of it's a change of screen. Uh, we just talked about how puppies jump up and nip, and humans don't like it. And how will we get them to stop? Well, here's how we're going to get them to stop. And again, we're going to use the pattern I talked about. We're going to show. Then we're going to tell, we're going to reward and release them, and of course we're going to repeat it a lot. So, you begin with a treat in your closed fist. You put your fist in front of puppy's nose, and he'll lick it, and he'll paw it, and he'll sniff it, because he, he knows, he can make sure it's a good one. He knows there's something good in there. 
but he will in a in fairly short order he'll kind of go oh, I don't seem to be able to get it and he'll stop he'll take all his body parts off your fist and the second he does you open your fist and you say take it and you repeat this three to five times and that's all that is the first step then then after you've re the next time you go to have a session which is three to five times as you're presenting your treat holding fist you use his name pup and the word off and again he'll, he may sniff and sniff but you'll find that the time that he sniffs and paws it gets shorter with each of these repetitions then as soon as he removes all his body parts you open your fist and say take it and repeat this one three to five times and of course when you're the reward here is that he gets the treat when you say take it and as I mentioned a session is three to five repetitions really really important to release your puppy when a session is over now the word you use will be something that you can come up with or your whole family needs to agree on it could be all done go play okay finished anything that you can come up with but it's really kind of cool if you all use the same word and I'm just gonna have a small mouthful of water and we will carry on and then of course in order to learn it you must repeat and repeat and repeat so all of these sessions like the three to five seconds if that takes in the first first going it might take a full minute to do three three to five sessions so you can see that if you have several sessions throughout the day you're still not spending any amount of time it's three minutes four minutes five minutes that's all it's not you don't have to set aside a great chunk of time it's now training time just make it work as you're going through your day and once you get to the point that your pup does not touch your presented fist he's waiting for you to say take it then when you open your fist delay saying take it for a second or two and very gradually increase that time so that he begins to understand that the sound of take it means he can have it but he mustn't touch it before that and once you've done all that you have trained your puppy to leave it now the only way training sticks is repeat 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 and once you you and the reason I use the word off is because it's so universal in its use it means get off me or someone else let go of slipper sock pants leg drop that sock shoe toy uh, particularly if you're playing with a toy you can play uh, tug of war if once he learns that off means drop it and then you can pick it up and take it and then you can tug and then you say off uh, and it also works really well if your puppy is going to be allowed on the furniture, but he must get off when you tell him to. Um, and in my world, the word off means remove yourself and all your body parts from that specific object. Of course, the repeating and repeating and repeating, uh, and you can reinforce it by you first in your closed fist, uh, a little later, in a day or two you can try it on your open palm uh, then you go to a low surface and then eventually you can drop it on the floor now steps two three and four we cover in the four paw training pattern uh, you know sort of a probably I think in module two we do open palm maybe module three uh, we're at the low surface and by module four we're, been, we're able to drop it on the floor so you never you don't rush it uh, because you want to have your puppy reliable you want him to reliably wait for that take it cue before you uh, move on to the next step and he needs to demonstrate that reliability at each step so only you will only start with the open palm when when you put your closed fist out and he doesn't come near it until you say take it and that means reliability means he waits for his cue eight times out of ten uh, and if he goes to take the treat, especially if you're working with an open palm or a low surface, uh, you can say, uh-uh, or if you can manage it, and I find that most of us humans cannot, you can say a neutral no. Zach George does the best neutral no I've ever heard. Most humans I know, myself included, we get uh, no has this 
irritability factor built in so we go no or we begin to shout that's not helpful and if your puppy has something that is just too good for him to give up like in his mind um, then certainly yelling doesn't work but be prepared especially in these early days to trade for a treat or a favorite toy is much more effective than yelling or name calling uh, puppy training I'm, this is no news <laughs> is important it can be easy and it certainly should be fun so that's what um, that's what I have to say about the uh, beginning to train off and you can start if you've got a puppy you can start that well wait till I'm finished but then you can start it uh, and the other thing that's so so important at this stage in puppies life is socialization everybody reads you read about it everywhere what I find interesting is the number of people who say to me when they have an eight nine or ten week old puppy oh my puppy is perfect I take it doesn't matter where I take him it doesn't matter who's there um, he loves everybody no noises don't bother him a bit I've taken him out I've taken him in my arms to the mall he's heard sirens and ambulances and mixers and vacuums nothing bothers him perfect that's just the way it's supposed to be when a puppy is eight nine or ten weeks old not much phases them at all however also very natural is that when adolescence begins puppies become more wary and as they become more wary then new things and people and places are all reason for suspicion and can become reason for fear so if you think about it the more stuff you expose your puppy to when he's very young and every nothing bothers him then the fewer things are new to him when he becomes an adolescent so you want to um, you, you want to get that socialization underway right away and because if you if you socialize your puppy you'll have the kind of dog that you can take anywhere he meets other people and dogs with confidence he's agreeable he's pleasant and if you don't socialize him he becomes a dog that doesn't get to go very many places because he's afraid of the world and that fear can sometimes turn to aggression which of course means that he's not having the life that you imagined for your dream dog so get that never mind that he's wonderful now trust me when I say that wonderful won't continue if you don't work at it by the way I should say I'm sure I have referred to every time I've said puppy I've said he and I love female puppy I love all dogs but I've always owned male dog so my default setting is he so please don't be offended if you have a girl I love the girl puppies too uh, if you lived here on the Sunshine Coast and perhaps you do uh, and you wanted me to come and help you solve one uh, uh, one issue um, I would charge you $65 for an hour and if you instead of the one hour you decided you needed more help and you wanted a good grounding for your puppy and you decided to buy the six week package I would show up at your house once a week for an hour um, I would you'd get a copy of my book you'd have access to puppy play groups on Sunday your puppy would get a chew toy you would get homework you would get handouts and I would charge you three hundred and thirty five dollars for that the new online program that I've just created is certainly worth at least that it includes six weekly webinars it includes six weekly delivered to your mailbox uh, resource pages six weekly live question and answer sessions and access to me for six weeks and I truly am a puppy expert my introductory offer is 67 bucks and when you get a new puppy there is so much to do I can't possibly tell you all that you need to know right here and now I can only basically give you a little taste but if you want the dog that you're that you dream of having and I want it for you um, you will know that you're you're getting the impression I'm sure that your first few weeks are critical so <laughs> They're critical, all right, but you still need to do everything else. You still need to take out the garbage. You still need to prepare meals. You still need to have a shower. And uh, you've already heard uh, how 
much difference a long-term confinement area can make. I'm just going to see. I would like to know, and hopefully this will look at that. It still says it, it came up just like it's supposed to. I want to know how it is now at your house. Um, are you still cleaning up puppy messes? And what you need to do is to, you have three options to answer. Yes, I'm cleaning them up every day about once a week or hardly ever. Now it could be somewhere in between, so just pick the closest the closest answer and uh, let's see because I'm prepared to guess, depending on the age of your puppy, that um, there's not going to be many hardly evers. So um, right now you're still in the constant vigilance mode. You can't Unless, you, unless you're using a long-term confinement area or the crate, you can't leave your puppy long enough to take the garbage out because you're just as likely as not to find a puddle on the floor or to find him noshing away on your newest shoes. Um, you don't dare have a shower uh, because you can't leave him. And, and you really feel like you can't, you can't move. So this little fur ball feels more like a ball and chain. Now, I don't think that um, that's the way you want it to be and you we've already talked about how much easier your life can be with a long-term confinement area in module one uh, of the of my four paw training pattern there's a video on how to set up a long-term confinement area and I did not as yet talk about the um, stuff chew toy so if I don't remember I'm gonna try I'm gonna hold it now till I get to the uh, to the question sec section um, you, you've heard what happens when you don't use a crate, you don't use a long-term confinement area. I mean, I think Gus was the living evidence of how badly that can go. Did I mention that he really and truly was never, ever properly crate trained? Um, I won't take the blame for all of that. He had a rather unfortunate beginning, shall we say. So, uh, But uh, I wasn't as good as I might have been either. Um, I'm just curious, and this is for thought more than a, an answer, although if you feel like popping it in the answer, you certainly can. Um, I'm going to end the poll, and I'm coming back to the chat box. Um, I'm curious. I, I want you to think for a minute. I'm going to ask you a couple of rhetorical questions, like, for example, how much did you pay for your puppy? What does it cost you to feed your puppy for a month? And how much is the vet visit? Yeah, well, because, and how much is it going to cost you to take puppy to puppy classes? Now, I can't say enough good about puppy classes. I am a big, big fan of puppy classes because of what they teach and because of the socialization aspect. Just make sure in your area that the classes that you're going to attend are taught by somebody who teaches uh, it with a positive reinforcement method, not jerking and pushing and all of all of that, which is dying out. I hope. Well, it is. It's just going to take a while. So, uh, but in addition to classes, even before you get to classes, and certainly while you're at classes and after classes, there's still so much more uh, that needs to happen and needs to need you need to be able to teach so that's the whole idea of my putting together this pattern was that you would have little bite-sized training morsels in your inbox every week you could incorporate it into your daily activity your whole family can be involved so right for the moment until you start going to classes you don't have to reschedule anything everybody's right there and there's Dr. Ian Dunbar says that all new puppies should meet a hundred new people before they're 12 weeks old. Now that sounds like a pretty tall order, but in module two, I give you an easy way to do that. Uh, and you know, with the training that we would do together, it won't be too long before you and your puppy will be on a leash, uh, off going off on a leash walk with your friends and their pups. The thing that is always well, it's not anymore. It's not surprising to me. But, you know, even people who've sat down and they thought, yep, I know it's going to be different. Let me see. Let's think about how this is going to be and how we're going to have, the, who's going to do what and how it's going to mess up our schedule. Um, even the people 
who uh, plan ahead as best they can are rarely prepared for the upset and upheaval that a new puppy causes in their life. Um, and that's why in that in the uh, four paw training package, I've had I'm having a live question and answer uh, session every I'll have it every Saturday actually. Um, so that because every dog is an individual, every puppy is an individual, every human being that's working with the puppy has different issues and needs and wants. So by having a live Q and A session on a Saturday morning. Uh, then anything that's come up for you that week, you can get an answer to it right then and there. And you know the the I guess the, the be, I don't know if it's the best thing. No, because I think the program is going to work. But if it doesn't, this is all at no risk to you because if you buy the four paw training pattern and it's not it doesn't work for you, then you can have your money back, no questions asked. Um, I want puppies to stay in their first homes for life. That's why I put this together, and that's why I made it uh, the cost of a vet visit or the cost of a month's supply of food. A pretty low investment uh, for this dog that, you, that you've dreamt of having. Uh, I've worked with a bunch of people here on the Sunshine Coast in the last number of years, and I'm just going to put up slides so that you can actually see um, what they have to say. Now, I wonder if I did that wrong. I wonder if I should back out. Uh, because I, even if you were to tell me you can't, I, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back again. Where are we? Hello, where did I go? Where am I? Hmm. Mm-mm. Here I am. Now I'm going to try that again because I think I did the wrong thing. So there we go. This is what I want and this is what I'm supposed to do. All right. So here's what people who've worked with me have had to say about the Jude the Puppy Nanny. Um, Karen said that she kept that I kept their whole family on the same page and the dog there is Heidi who's a, a greater Swiss mountain dog who is probably now well in excess of 100 pounds. Uh, and she says that I gave them the direction, the knowledge, and the tools to work together as a family. And I love working with families. And um, this is Elvis's folks. And it was important that they have a very mannerly dog because he's now a very big boy. And uh, they said that Jen says that my help prevented them from having arguments as to how they should go about what they were doing. Um, and here is Harrison and his wonderful dog, Lenny. And he said that Lenny wouldn't be the same dog if it hadn't been for me. He learned the distant sit, which is not basic. It's a little bit, it's a, it's a little bit beyond the basic, but he was a fast learner and we did it. And he says that learning that saved Lenny's life. Um, and I'm glad it did because Lenny's uh, and Harrison come and help me out on Sunday mornings. Um, Here's uh, Leah with Merlin, and she said that she enjoyed having me available to her, and I'm glad that she thinks I have a sense of humor. I'm kind of proud of it. <laughs> and, and the fact that I use gentle techniques, and that's one of the things that I have said to you. I don't care where you get your training, but please work with people who respect the creature that you're working with. Um, so that's now I need to come back here I am back again um, you know you're not if you were to um, if you were to start training your puppy right now then you would be amazed at the difference it would make in 24 hours and did I mention that puppies learn best between 4 and 16 weeks so the sooner you get started the sooner you'll be on your way your dream dog. I love people who take action. In fact, I want to reward people who take action. I'm now. I'm going to show you what's involved in the um, in my six week package, and and I'll go through it quite quickly uh, because time is uh, moving on. So we've already said you get six live webinars, six Q and A sessions, six weekly resource pages, and you get exit access to me for six weeks. In the first one we're going to talk 
potty training, crate training, the long-term confinement area. We're going to talk a lot about handling and socializing, and we're going to train your puppy to sit, and we're going to work on leave it. And then the following week, we're going to talk a lot more about socialization, new people and new things. Um, we're going to talk about how the potty accident, i.e. the potty training is going. We're going to talk a great deal about handling, which I haven't talked about at all today, but super important. And we're going to be training your puppy now in module two to follow, to look at you, to stay when you have him in a sit. And we're going to progress a little more with our leave it. And then in module three, more socialization because we're talking about new people and encountering new things. Now we're going to start leaving puppy home alone and that's a process that you want to begin and you want to do it properly so that puppy's happy enough to hang out home alone. Uh, potty accidents should be getting much fewer by now. We're going to talk about handling and in the training in module three it will be advanced leave it. We'll be timing our sit stays. We'll practice look some more and we'll be doing some fancier following. In week four, uh, more socialization, new things, new places, new people, home alone longer and in the training at still more advanced leave it and then we're going to work on the greeting sit which is learning to sit and stay by the door when people come in and when people go out. We're going to start adding a leash to our follow now and we're going to work, continue to work on look. We're going to ask, we're going to teach down and ask pup to stay in a, in a down so it's a down stay and we're going to practice come and we're going to add the collar grab. You notice how the potty accident, potty started at the top and now it's nearly at the bottom. That's because there should be very few accidents by now. But handling is still important, so it's still there. And in module five, socialization, because this is your big window, uh, new people, new places, new surfaces, new things, new dog, new dogs this time. And home alone, and then the training will be look and come, sit and stay, leash walking a down stay. We're going to train your puppy to stand and to stay in a stand. So that's a stand stay. We're going to work some more on leave it and we're certainly going to work some more on the greeting sit because the one thing that people talk so much about is how crazy their dog goes when people come to the door and that's what training the greeting sit will prevent. Potty accidents and handling are still there but hopefully there's not much going, not much mopping up going on anymore. And then in week six, which is the final module, the greeting sit, which should be pretty solid by now, and a sit stay in any situation, a down stay, a stand stay, we time them all to see how, what kind of progress has been made, or you time them and then you can tell me. <laughs> we will be doing puppy push ups, come, leave it, and leash walking more socialization because that goes on for a lifetime, handling and potty accidents. So um, that is, uh, let me see, so there you have it again. Now, um, I told you earlier it was $67 and so it will be after 8 o'clock today but because I really like people who take action right now until 8 o'clock, um, there it will be Forty-seven dollars, and I'm coming back to you now, <laughs> and I'm going to put in the bar. I'm going to put the four-paw training pattern offer. Now, when you click on the uh, the link to it, um, the page when you get to the page, the buttons on the page will all say sixty-seven dollars. But if you click on one of them to buy it, when you get to PayPal the price will be $47 until 8 o'clock this evening. And the reason we want to do that is because um, you want to get if you want to get started and be ready for the first training module which will be on Wednesday morning and of course they will all be available for um, you to listen to watch after as the recording because depending on whether you're available at 10 o'clock uh, in the morning. And if you start now, uh, then you will be ahead of the game come Wednesday uh, because there is no time like the present. And just so you know,
applying the, the four paw training pattern will not create your dream dog. It's not magic. You still have to do the work. You still have to uh, develop the relationship and create the bond. And then the pattern will, but the pattern will make it easy and it will make it fun. And um, it's, I know how hard it is to keep track of what you're doing with your puppy. So what I've included in the uh, resources that you will get is a uh, training checklist that you can print off and you can stick it on your fridge or on the wall and then everybody can fill in the bits that they've done that day. Uh, now, I know, um, mm -hmm -hmm. let me see where we are. Oh, it, there's, there's, um, you don't want a perfect dog. You want a dog that's your dream dog, the dog that's right for you. Whatever you had imagined having, that's what you want. Um, and it's really important to start now so that you have a confident dog. And you do know that there are training deadlines. One of them is the fact that by the time a puppy is four and a half months old, he must learn not to exert any pressure with his teeth on human skin. And that's where the tra off training comes in. That's why we work so hard on that. Um, and if this is not for you, take heart. You can you can train your dog any time at all. But um, if you were to start now, and you were certainly if you were to be a, one of the early action takers, you'd actually save yourself twenty bucks, which would buy you some lattes. I'm all lattes are a treat. I'm always in, in favor of lattes. Now I think I've pretty much said all that I need to say. So I'm going to ask if you have any questions because we are. At the, we're actually one minute after the hour, and I don't want to run on too long because too much longer because I know how busy you are. Um, so if you have a question, then please heave it at me. Uh, if not, there's a uh, while I'm waiting to see because I told you there is a bit of a time delay. Um, I've had a bunch of questions, and oh, I did tell you I would talk a little bit about stuffed chew toys. Whoops. So. When you put your puppy in your long-term confinement area, this is why. Oh, do I have techniques for separation anxiety? Yes, that's what we, you noticed in the program, we talked about um, being home alone. That's why we start having our puppy um, home alone, meaning home alone doesn't exactly mean home alone when we start. It just means putting your puppy in a crate with some things to keep him occupied, like this and this, and this, and leaving him, even if it's only to go upstairs or go out the front door and come in the back. The trick with, I don't know how old your puppy is, Jackie, but um, this may, you can start doing this now. Uh, all, anytime you want to change behavior, it always has to be done in tiny little pieces, and it requires a great deal of consistent effort on your part. So. Let me talk about these and you can see how they might work for you. Um, there's not many dogs that don't like to choose something. And these are my favorite, um, some of my favorite. This one, they're all stuffable. And that's the key is that you have to be able, this one here has a hole in it. Uh, so you can stuff some kibble or some tiny bits of treat in there. And then you can smear this with peanut butter, cream cheese, wet dog food, whatever you like to make it interesting. You can do the same thing with the waggle, and that they all love the waggle. I have it in two sizes. This is for the very little puppy, and then there's, and it comes in a bigger size than this as well. I'm going to use the big one because it's easier for you to see. This has two ends, hole in it, both stuffable. Smear the outside, and it has little tiny rubber. I call them darts. Little rubber pieces in there that you can actually trim so that whatever you put in there will come out. It's no good if puppy can't get it. Now, it shouldn't fall out in a, you know, in a steady trail, but he should be able, by shaking it and throwing it around, he should be able to get it out. Uh, Squirrel Dude is the same. You can put one little fancy bit of treat in the hole here, and then you stuff the whole thing with, with kibble with a few treats mixed in it, um, and again, you this one, you might even be, yes, you can. Can you see the, the little rubber bits? Well, you can trim them uh, with scissors to make them the right size to make sure that the kibble will fall out. And my, my last item is, this is a real bone, and it has already been chewed many times. It has been also refilled. 
Now, I'm a big proponent of raw bones, which you can get at the grocery store called soup bones, because they're, they're beef shank bones. When you bring it home first and you give it to your puppy, it'll have marrow in it and some meat on it. And for a very little puppy, even a bone this size, that's too much marrow because it's too rich. So I'd give it to him for a few minutes today, put it in the fridge, give it to him tomorrow, and so on. After you have a uh, collection of these, then don't throw them out. You can either you can drop them in boiling water if you feel the need to sterilize it, and then you can take some kibble, mix it with either cream cheese or wet dog food, and pack it in. Um, and then, if you're doing two or three at a time, you can put a couple in the freezer and a couple in the uh, a crate or the long-term confinement area. And if you're going to leave, um, if you're going to leave, aha, uh -huh, yes, I'm going to answer those. If you're, if you've got these, anything, and these, these are um, applicable to both both people who are talking about uh, separation. If if you're going to leave a puppy alone, make sure she's got something to do. Life can be awfully boring with nothing to do, and she's only got good things to do. So, uh, yes, she'll be all right in the confinement area. She has. Um, if, make sure she's got stuff, chew toys. Now, there's all kinds available, and I use the, the. This is the smallest one of these, I think. But you can also get a Kong, which is very small. Anything that you can put food in. Now you take it as part of her daily ration and mix it with something tasty. So you uh, give her two or three of things that, that will keep her busy. And uh, I would, she will fall, that the whole point with a tiny puppy is that they chew on this for a while, then they need a nap. So then they're good. But I would definitely keep her in, in the confinement area. And... Um, I know that you'll worry while you're out because that's just what we new puppy owners do, but she'll be fine. As long as she's safe, she's got something to chew on, she's got a bed to sleep in, uh, she's got water, and don't be gone too long. A couple of hours max at this age. And um, if your dog is a little bit older, I'd still, this is what I would be doing. I don't know what, um, what kind of a chewer she is, he, she is. She, it's a she. Uh, see, all I did was refer to he's. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, something that you can stuff with something edible. And the something edible, it could be tiny little pieces of cheese. It could be, it can be real food, and it can be kibble. It can be kibble and treats, and then smear it with something interesting. I always recommend cream cheese as opposed to peanut butter because I, my experience is that not all dogs like peanut butter. So that's what I would do if you have uh, a dog who has some separation anxiety issues. I'd make sure they had something to do, uh, that they had a place where they were safe and felt safe and secure. If she's older, then she may have a crate and you may never close the door. That's fine too. Uh, and then start leaving her by simply going out one door, coming in the in the other, um, and do that sort of do it two, three, four, five times a day. And then gradually go a little bit further. We give her, oh, good, 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 good. Uh, and if you give her um, a Kong, if, that, if you think that that's only probably lasting her 10 to 15 minutes and you're gone longer than that, well, then get a couple more. Uh, this um, stick, I like this, because you can really smear the, the grooves with uh, cream cheese and the, the licking takes quite a while. Because if you're gone for quite a, a long time and it's an older dog, well, she's obviously awake longer, so she needs stuff to do. She just needs to keep herself occupied. And yes, exactly. As soon as she, as soon as she's, it's gone, she freaks. Um, so then you need more, and you want to. You also want to shorten up the times that you're gone. Um, and then only gradually increase it. I know that's not necessarily practical because it's quite possible that you have to go to work. But this being whatever day it is, Saturday, I would start at least uh, when you're at home, leaving and coming back, leaving and coming back, leaving and coming back. Even if you only do it from now till Monday morning when you have to go back to work, it'll begin to make a difference. And then in the Monday evening, and every time you have the opportunity, leave and come back, leave and come back. 
always leaving her with lots of chew toys. And that, by the way, would be the only time that the puppy gets those stuffed chew toys, is especially for your older dog. Um, is if you're if she's in the confinement area, they're not toys that even that that come out and get played with on other occasions. In the in the long-term confinement area, they're hers to do as she pleases, and then you can stuff them and refill them. So um, I will I will be wanting to know how how you got on with that. And now we're at ten after five, so I do believe that uh, we should move right along. And I'm going to. Is there anybody got any more questions? She's Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know, the the thing is, Jackie, I understand about the sketchy place. And 10 months is not real old, so it's definitely, definitely changeable. But consistent, short, short duration to start and increase it gradually. Just like we increase everything else, we want to make sure that that the place we are, whatever we're training, is solid before we move on. There is no... <laughs> There's no instant coffee in puppy training. You don't just add water, stir, and drink it. It has to. It's a little piece and a little piece and a little piece. And always make sure that if you, for example, if you if, if she freaks out, for example, that you were to leave her in her confinement area, let's say it's in the kitchen, and you were to go and upstairs, if you have upstairs or basement or whatever, you go in another room where she can't see you, and you come back in 10 seconds and she hasn't made a sound make sure you reward her tell her what a good girl she is yes I have I think it's time we all went so I'm <laughs> I'm simply going to say one last thing about potty training this is my last tip for today if you want to get potty training handled in a hurry and who doesn't then do not free feed do not put a bowl of food on the floor and let puppy have at it all day. Puppies need to eat four times a day, small amounts, uh, and then you can control what comes out. So if if you want to get pot, potty training underway, that's my that's my last tip of the day. I thank you so much for joining me. Um, head on over and uh, pick up that program if you want to train in the comfort of your own home, uh, starting on Wednesday morning at 10 and by all means send me any questions that you have and that's it for me for this time thanks for being here have fun with your puppy